Oh, hello, everyone. Um, we have been uh, receiving many phone calls from patients with regards to medication they have been recommended by their doctors. Uh, the purpose to treat any immune um, situation that could be caused from recurrent pregnancy loss or uh, recurrent implantation failure. Um, I wanted to talk about that today. Recurrent pregnancy loss and recurrent implantation failure are two of the most um, devastating situations patients can go through. These, uh, most of these patients have been trying to conceive for many years and spend an unimaginable amounts of money in the process. Sadly, um, it is hard for patients not to feel guilty about their situation in an already guilt-driven industry as a infertility. For those who know me, you will understand that um, this is one of the reasons I insist so much during the consultations and treatments that these situations have nothing to do with guilt and that they are medical problems that most of the times have medical solutions. One of the most frustrating bits in recurrent pregnancy loss is that most of the times we will not find any reason that could explain this situation. But what we also know is that 70%, 70% of the times couples will succeed in having a baby without absolutely any intervention. What I want to talk to you today is about the involvement of immunology in this medical system. The basis of immunology in reproductive medicine is on the notion that your body rejects the pregnancy. Because this is a very simplistic approach that can increase the sense of guilt in patients already overwhelmed by this feeling. By using the word in rejection, it invites the notion that the immune system is in some way involved. Based on this, most studies and treatments have been proposed uh, based on the notion that if you dampen down or reduce the immune reaction, this might improve pregnancy results. Certainly, um, this may be a very convincing idea but it is not based on scientific evidence. It has been 30 years of these tests and studies, and the scientific community still hasn't figured it out. Many studies have been done with meta-analysis, the most important, the most trustworthy type of studies in the scientific evidence-based uh, community have been published by the Cochrane database by Fertility and Sterility magazine finding absolutely no benefits of the use of immunology in recurrent pregnancy loss and recurrent implantation. These and other studies have driven every single fertility society in the world, including the European society, the American society, the British society, etc., to recommend against the use of these tests and these treatments. I am not trying to say that there is no room for immunology or proteins. Implantation is actually considered an inflammatory reaction. It is just a very complicated process that we understand very, very little about. And the tools that we have at the moment just do not seem to do it. I'm also not saying that we should never use these tests or treatments. There are times when we have done everything that our scientifically based arsenal has to give, and we are still failing. In these very small, particular number of cases, there might be room for immune testing and treatment, but certainly not the majority of patients and certainly not the numbers that we are seeing. In normal situations, one could do a risk assessment and consider the use, the use of immunosuppressants, knowing that the evidence is not there, but the risks are very low. One might then consider to use this approach. But in the midst of a pandemic, where we know that this medication will reduce the capacity of the body to respond uh, to the infection of a virus that we barely understand properly, I sincerely do not think it is a good idea. Remember, just remember, 70% of the patients with recurrent pregnancy loss will succeed regardless of the use or not of the immunomodulating medication. And remember, these are tests and treatments that the overwhelming majority of fertility centers in the world do not use, do not recommend, and do not consider safe. Guys, have a beautiful day. Stay safe. And we'll talk soon, okay? Bye-bye.